Assalamualaikum and hi, my name is Nur Shafiqah Amtab Rahman and I will start the presentation of our group. As for the design, we use two-story residential house. As shown above, we have converted the architecture drawing of the building regarding the first and ground floor into the structural layout using AutoCAD software. The function of structural layout is able us to identify and select the suitable mechanical ventilation and electrical system to be applied in this residential house. Thus, mechanical ventilation and electrical system will be added and explained further later. So, please stay tuned. That's all from me. Thank you. I will pass to the next presenter of our group. In summer, the hot air passes through the ground heat exchanger and is cooled from 30-something degrees Celsius to approximately 18, and when distributed inside the building, it creates pleasant, comfortable and healthy climate in it, even on the hottest of days. So for the mechanical ventilation system, as we all know, mechanical ventilation is driven by mechanical fans. Fans can be installed directly by windows, walls, or other surfaces, or in air ducts to provide or exhaust air to an area. The climate affects the sort of mechanical ventilation used. To avoid or control interfacial condensation, which happens when warm moist from within a structure permits a wall, roof, or a floor, and comes in contact with a cold surface, infiltration may be necessary in warm, humid regions. Without mechanical ventilation to supply fresh air, moisture, odors, and other pollutants can build up inside the home. And these are the importances of mechanical ventilation systems in households. Homeowners may unwind knowing that their residence has adequate ventilation. Utilizing a mechanical ventilation system has ad additional benefits such as enhanced interior air quality. A variety of mechanical ventilation systems are available for selection, depending on the local temperature and the home's heating. For the calculation of Q, which is the flow rate for three bathrooms and one kitchen in our project, uh, using the formula given, uh, for the kitchen, the Q was equal to 0 0.3 meters per second. For the first bathroom, it was 0 0.05 meters per second. Uh, meters cube per second. For the second bathroom, it was 0 0.035 meter cube per second, and for the third bathroom, it was 0 0.0316 meter cube per second. These were calculated using the given formula, and uh, uh, we, did, we deducted the Q uh, formula. Now for the ventilation pro uh, products that we have chosen, after considering a lot of factors, important factors in the process of choosing uh, products for both of the kitchen and all the bathrooms that, that we have in this project. So here are the uh, here is the product that we chose for the kitchen, and here are the, pro uh, the specifications of it, the model name, the number, the size, the speed, capacity, power, and even the price. And the prices are within the range for both of the kitchen and bathroom, within the range of 120 ringgits to 150 ringgits. And uh, this is also for the bathrooms, for each bathroom, we will, uh, this is the best product that we have chosen, and uh, these are the specifications of it. And that was it for my part, now I'll pass it to my group. Thank you. My name is Nambingo. In this video, I present about the selection of the air conditioning system for our group project. Now, here is show the floor plan of our group project. The area that I choose to install the air conditioner is at the master room, the bedroom one and bedroom two, with the identical dimension, which is the three meter times four meter, and also the family area in the second floor. So now here is the procedure to determine the horsepower needed for install an air conditioner. The first step is we need to calculate the area of the room in the unit of square feet. We can assume that one square meter is equal to 10.76 square feet. After that, we check the recommended cooling capacity by referring the table 3.1 here. So the cooling area in square feet here, we can determine the BTU cooling capacity by referring this table. After that, we make some adjustments as necessary. Such as in our case, I assume that it is very sunny room. 
and we need to increase the capacity by 10%. It means we need to times the BTU cooling capacity, let's say it's 7,000 BTU here, we need to times it with 1.1. After that, I also consider the number of occupants here, which is at the area in bedroom and master bedroom here is 2%, family area is 5%. So we need to adjust by at the 600 BTU per person. After that, we should find the total BTU and round up to the nearest thousand. After that, we check the BTU requirement by based on the table here, which is the equivalent BTU here is uh, what that we calculate here. Then the cost power is shown at here. So now look at our case. For master bedroom, the area is 4.5 meter times 4 meter, which is 18 meter here. Then we convert it into the square feet, which is 193.75 square feet. Then we refer to the table 3.1 here, the BTU. So the 193 is in the range of the 150 to 250. So the BTU is 6,000. After that, for the bedroom one and bedroom two, the area is three meter times four meter, which is twelve meter. Then the area in square feet is one hundred and twenty nine point one seven square feet. So from the table three point one here, it is in the range of the one hundred to one hundred fifty square feet. So the BTU is five thousand. Now next for the family area, which is four point five meter times two meter, then the area in square feet is ninety six point eight square feet. So since it is out of the range here, so I assume the minimum value here, which is five thousand BTU, as the value. After that, we calculate the adjustment, which is we need to times the one. One that I told just now, then we need to add the adjustment for the number of occupants, which is two. We need to add two times the 600 for the master bedroom and also the bedroom one and two. For family area, the number of occupants is five, so I add with five times 600. So the BTU that we get here is 7,800 BTU, and at bedroom one and bedroom two is 6,700 BTU, and for family area is 8,500 BTU. So we refer to the table 3.2 here, the 7,800 and also the 6,700 is up of the range of the equivalent BTU here. So I assume the minimum value of the horsepower, which is one, that we need to install the air conditioner. And for the family area, it is in the range of the 8,050, so I assume it also be one horsepower. So in conclusion, all of the selected room is one horsepower. Besides that, we also can determine the horsepower value by using an automatic method here, which is the power factor is equal to area times 80, then divide with 9,000. For the master bedroom and power factor is 1.72, then we adjust it to the nearest, which is 1.5. For bedroom 1 and bedroom 2, the power factor is 1.15, so it's near to one horsepower. For family area, the power factor is 0 0.86, so the nearest is one horsepower. So this method is not so accurate, same is it only consider the area and not the other condition. So uh, we also apply the one horsepower air conditioner for all of the selected room. So the brand that I founded in the market is the Daikin FTV Air Series, which is this is a indoor, this is an outdoor. So now let's look detail for this air conditioner. Okay, so now here is the website of the Daikin. The series is FTV S series with the specification here. The product is non inventor type and the refrigerant use is R32. Then this air conditioner got Gene Ion roof filter and also the iPlasma technology. And here is some of the product feature of this air conditioner. For the specification here, for the specification here, the horsepower that we want to buy is one horsepower. And the rated cooling capacity is 9,500, uh, 9, which is within the range of the BTU that we covered just now. So for this device specification is here. So the retrial price here is 1,700, which means that the price is within the budget. For the horsepower 1.5 model, the price is 2,120. So it is over the budget. So I assume that all of the room is installed with the one horsepower. I think that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you to the previous presenter. I'm a next presenter. My name is Nora Ayuni Binti Kamri, metric number DF210071. Now I want to present about part 3 in this project, the distribution electrical system. In part 3, I have a the electrical wiring diagram. For the electrical wiring diagram, I have two plans. Firstly, for first floor and second floor. This is uh, the detailing of the element for electrical in this project. Next, I want to present about the general guideline for electric. Next, I want to present about the general guidelines for electrical distribution system. Firstly, is a load calculation. In load calculation, F uh, determine the electrical load requirement, the power demand of various equipment, lightning hashback system, and the sizing of a uh, conductor and transformer. Second, is a uh, distribution system design. In this design, must have selected the appropriate voltage level, determine the number and location of electrical panel, sizing conductor, selecting protective device and ensuring proper grounding. That is a uh, overcurrent protection. Overcurrent protection is a 
circuit breaking and fuse are correctly sized and coordinated to provide adequate protection for the electrical system and connected equipment. What is a electrical panel? In electrical panel, must have properly sized and located electrical panel based on the electrical load requirement. Five is a wiring method. In wiring method, must understand the various wiring method and cable types to table for different application such as conduit system, cable tray, pressway and wiring insulation type. Lastly is a safety measurement. In safety measurement, should ensure proper lock and tack out procedure, personal protective equipment, PPE and safe working distance for energy equipment. Last part for me, I want to present about the recommended resources for the electrical distribution system. Firstly, in a national electrical code and DC. Second, in the electrical engineering handbook. Thirdly, in a, the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineer IEE standard. After that, in a power distribution planning reference book. Then, in a business paper and technical journal. Lastly, in a recommended resources is a Local electrical code and regulation. That's all for me. I pass this presentation to the next presenter. Assalamualaikum and hi, my name is Surai Binti Kasim. Metric number DF210067. In this part, I will explain about the conclusion. As the conclusion, electrical and mechanical engineers frequently work together to solve a problem or create a new product, technology or building. Mechanical engineers and electrical engineers usually take part in separate stage of the project or the product development cycle because they have diverse skill sets. Both electrical and mechanical courses are very important. This is because engineering Engineering mechanics act as a link between theory and practice, contributing to create new concepts and theories, identify and understand phenomena, and provide experimental and computational techniques. While the gadget and system we are used every day are improved by electrical and electronic engineers who are at the fore forefront of practical technology. We innovate to address the communication technological and energy needs of society from solar energy system to smartphones. When study board of these courses, students be able to gain more of the knowledge and abilities necessary to choose the optimum power sources for the machines and electrical devices or any kinds of product they create. That is all from my group. Thank you.